Hey guys, Xboxer here, and uh, today I'm going to be doing a couple things to my Aaron snowblower. Uh, I'm going to be one upgrading the alternator, which is a stock uh, part number 79790. It's a 5 amp 60 watt half moon, and uh, the model number on this machine is a 921018. I don't know if you can see it, but let's see if I can get a good. That's the information on the engine. It's basically on the errands. Uh, it's the 30 inch wide. It's the 342 cc. I've already been able to take off the flywheel, which means that um, it was a real pain in the ass to get off. That um, crankshaft nut is on there pretty tight. Uh, I do have, I used a strap wrench to get it off and a five pound sledge to get that stupid thing off. It was pretty hard. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna upgrade 79790 which is your half one there it does have the four screw locations but only the two that are used are tapped so you will have to tap those two uh, there so that, I'm gonna have to go and buy myself a tap set there but I'm gonna be upgrading that stator to uh, what's this one the 695466 which is a full round uh, alternator here I'll take it out in a minute uh, which is a 10 amp stator uh, AC only. Okay guys, so this is the stator install, which these uh, holes are actually offset. These two and these two are actually closer together and from here to here they're farther away. So it really only goes two ways, uh, but you got the wires that are going through here. I got the 79790 off to the side just for the moment, so it does fit, but I do need to find the right bolts to um, uh, tap these here so I gotta tap them and then find the right bolts to fit them in there so after I do that I should be able to put the flywheel back on and I can have 10 amps at my disposal I have added the um, these spotlights here and put the spotlights on a four inch peg so they can clear the uh, bucket I got another one over there again they're on a riser so these are uh, spotlights but then I'm gonna also put on the back somewhere here or probably with the um, the cab somewhere. I'm going to put the um, floodlights up on top most likely. Wiring is pretty straightforward. Uh, I got your bridge rectifier here. I added a couple fender washers and a heat sink. Uh, I got a 4700 uh, pico, no not pico farad, uh, micro farad cap at 25 volts and then took the existing plug that was go normally go into the light here and made an input plug into the AC. So the AC will go in here, and then it'll rectify it, and then it will feed all the LED lights. So it looks like I need a little bit more research to work on, but in the next segment I'll show you uh, how to um, tap the holes and tell you the right sizes. The other thing that I'm going to do is these rubber bellows. Unfortunately, these things, I put lithium grease on here to prevent them from uh, freezing, but it looks like these rubber bellows, they burn out or they just you know, rot out over time. This keeps water out of the cable lines here. So you got one, you got two, and then you got one here on the bottom, which is right here, that's the longest one. There is a website for it. Um, they're not, they're standard size, they're not exactly the exact size. You can't get them from Aaron's, but I will show you at least the closest match that I could find and link into the description down below. Alright, now I've been able to reassemble everything, uh, the test was great, uh, the uh, LEDs work just fine, even at a low idle, the um, LEDs light up complete, uh, before I had to give it a little bit of gas, and that has to do with the ring, that's a full ring, and at a lower speed, it's uh, getting the magnets at full, all the time, rather than half of the size of the, uh, of the stator. Having said that, now I have two good, powerful spotlights here that are raised about four inches on the top here. Uh, the next thing that I have to figure out here is where to put my floodlights. Now I have a couple options to do that, and it all depends on where I really want to go with it. Uh, I have a, the first option here would be to um, lift up the cab a little bit and mount them right here, although I get a little bit of the shadow from the chute. Don't want to do that. I would prefer them to go up high. Uh, I could make a bracket that uh, attaches at the handlebars here, or even on the body somewhere. And I've seen a guy do this where it's just a cross beam up and down here, and he would mount the, basically create a light bar above it. Uh, that's an option too, and probably the safest. Uh, the only other place I could think of 
is if you look over here on the cab, now the cab doesn't really, it's not meant to support a lot of weight, but the lights aren't that heavy. I can either put them right on the side here and have them shoot out directly that way, uh, which would give me a nice wide pattern. Or what I'd like to do, and I'm still toying with the idea, is to uh, mount them through the cab fabric and attach them to this uh, light bar, or I'm calling it a light bar, but it's essentially the support bracket that holds the cab in and around here. I have uh, these um, mounting brackets where you put the light here and it attaches to the round tube. Now, this is the smallest uh, that they come with, though I'd have to put a little bit, uh, another spacer in between. I figure I'd put them right here, respectively. Of course, that would mean I'd have to drill into the fabric so there would be two small holes, but uh, as long as it wouldn't cause any major uh, ripping or tearing, the problem with this cab is that you buy it, it's pretty expensive, and this particular one they don't make anymore because the newer ones actually come up more square and you don't have the canopy going all the way down because the problem was that it always went and mess with this light and you got a really bad glare so they don't make this anymore so i couldn't just get a replacement um canopy for it uh the frame would still be good and if i wanted to go for the newer version it would fit it wouldn't have that canopy on the bottom but i'd have to rebuy the whole thing uh they I'm called up errands and they don't have any of the parts uh individually so so with the wiring to make all four leds power and the heated grips uh, there was uh, something a little different that you have to do that you don't normally see on snowblowers and that's uh, putting a voltage regulator on it. Uh, the reason being is that the uh, upgraded stator that I have uh, is 10 amps but it's also outputting at high idle 36 volts AC. Low idle is about 15. Now the LEDs are able to handle up to 30 uh, volts but uh, the heated hand grips are not. The heated hand grips they'll work but they'll get so hot and then will eventually burn out, possibly even melt, so that's not gonna work. So I put this regulator on here, and uh, now this is a part number 691185, although it's under a couple different no different numbers there. It's from Briggs and & Stratton, and uh, it basically is a three wire. You have your uh, AC going in from the stator, and then you have uh, the red, which is the positive, and then the actual frame is the negative. Now. I will say that this particular Aaron's model, all of the wiring for the heated hand grips and the original halogen do not have any reference to ground. So you can um, probe the uh, input there and you'll see that it doesn't have any continuity to ground. So that's not, I just wanted to mention that it's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, if you have something that's got reference to ground, that's fine. Uh, just for my particular application, it is floating from the frame. So the other thing to mention here is that this voltage regulator, it needs a battery. It needs a voltage uh, source to regulate from. And if you were to start this up right now and you would not see the lights turn on, the reason being because there's no voltage built up on the DC side for the regulator to turn on. So what I have to put together here is uh, a small little 12 volt battery pack. I may just do, uh, right now I just have a nine volt and a two, uh, double A's actually connected together in a little uh, taped up box. You flip the switch on, get some 12 volts uh, going through there, start up the engine and then the regulator will turn on and with uh, a, a 4750 volt uh, uh, cap in line with the LEDs, that will then act as the voltage source in place of the battery. Uh, that way you don't have any issues. This does output DC off, off the bat, but an extra capacitor never hurts. So what I'll probably wind up doing for something a little bit more permanent, I'll go underneath uh, or somewhere on the side here. There's a sealed lead acid battery where you can put it in any which direction, it won't leak or anything like that. They have a 1.3 amp hour battery where I can leave it under somewhere here that I can flip a switch, turn on the lights, start the engine, and I can leave it like that. You can have the lights on when the engine's not running, or I can flip the switch off and it'll still run just as, uh, uh, just fine, but um, it, whatever whatever your preference. I think the, I think that the smaller battery pack that I made is going to work okay for now. Although it does per, uh, pose a new problem that I have to basically flash the 
uh, voltage regulator to turn on every time I start the engine. So uh, just going to whip up another uh, a more permanent solution with the attached battery here and hopefully that uh, should uh, do it. Here's the final bracket setup. I used some one by two common board. Uh, not the prettiest, but it certainly does work. I'm gonna paint it black so it all blends in. I use some uh, half inch uh, pipe clamps, nothing really special. Put one down here, one up here. Same thing on both sides here, and it comes up, and I didn't have the right angle cut to do this, so it doesn't look the prettiest. I just added a reinforcing board here to add the sturdiness. Um, you know, just added the two uh, 18 watt LED floodlights, uh, and then the wire goes down on the side, and then down underneath here where the light is where all my connections are. And just to add a little bit of rigidity, uh, I use these uh, reusable zip ties, the big heavy duty ones, right at the uh, corner here. And I added some foam since now this is right up against, this rod is right up against this piece of wood. Um, Maybe I should have uh, rounded out the edges, but I didn't want these rubbing up uh, in between with the fabric sandwich between it. That would eventually cause it to rip and fray. Um, other than that, uh, and I have it done on this side too, but that is the method that I'm going for, and you can't really tell once it's, obviously once it's painted black, it'll blend in. It looks pretty good, uh, and it's even brighter at used at night. I've already tried it. Um, the cab uh, is not exactly congruent, so it does look a little off. It might be looking a little bit like this, but um, not gonna really matter. Uh, the only other thing I've done, just I've, from experience, is that this cab catches a lot of wind, and you don't want this thing flying with the wind, especially if the wind is blowing this way. So I put some nylon rope, connected it to the frame here, and then right to the handlebar, so if this thing wants to lift up, then these ropes will take the stress before the components over here will. So I hope this video was uh, educational and if anyone has any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below. And uh, thanks so much for following along and cheers.